presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Arizona. The scenic beauty back home in Arizona. d back settling in for some home cooking here at Chase Field. The nine-game homestand continues. Tonight, another test from division-leading Milwaukee, which was the team rookie Mike Bolsinger faced the last time he started for the d backs And now, after some roster reshuffling today, Bolsinger is back out there against the Brew Crew, this time on his home turf. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium and Bob Renly along the way. This is game two of four, D-backs and Brewers. Uh, when we got to the ballpark today, we were expecting to see Wade Miley, but there's been a roster change, and Wade Miley pitches tomorrow. Yeah, everybody got pushed back a couple of days, and uh, Mike Bolsinger taking the ball tonight, as you mentioned. Uh, his last start came against the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, not exactly what he was expecting, as you now look at the corrected rotation. In Bolsinger's last start against the Brewers, he hooked up with tomorrow starter Matt Garza and uh, an ultimate 8-3 Diamondbacks loss uh, when Bolsinger came out of the game he was trailing 4-3 gave up a couple of long home runs at Miller Park in that ball game definitely want to keep the ball down keep it in the park he'd been pitching really well down in Reno hopefully he'll maintain that momentum and so Will Harris goes down to AAA Reno Mike Bolser comes up and takes Bronson Arroyo's rotation spot with Arroyo on the DL now the Brewers have tried a number of different leadoff hitters lately the guy they like and the guy that has worked out the best is Scooter Jeanette the second baseman you know historically the Brewers you think about their offense Harvey's wall bangers bunch of guys that just pound the ball out of the ballpark and Scooter Jeanette is the guy that figures to be the table setters for years to come. Top of the order, doing a nice job. And a big home run last night. He's at the top of the order again tonight. When we come back, first pitch on the way, Brewers and D-backs from Chase Field. But first, Tony Gwynn's legacy continues. Some news on that from the D-backs clubhouse. That's next.
you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jack in the Box. If the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. Welcome back to Chase Field on this Tuesday night. Roof open, beautiful evening. The Brewers taking on the Diamondbacks in game two of this four-game series. Jody Jackson with you. And a day later, we are all still very saddened by the loss of Tony Gwynn. 54 years of age, way too young. Now, Tony Gwynn died of cancer, cancer that he believes was caused by the use for many years of smokeless tobacco. And even though Tony Gwynn has passed away, the impact that he has on others, well, that still lives on. In fact, as Jack Magruder told us yesterday on FoxSportsArizona.com, Diamondbacks closer Addison Reed came into the clubhouse yesterday. He heard the news earlier in the day, but he went into his locker. He had seven cans of smokeless tobacco, and he threw them away. Addison told me today that he had intended on quitting for a long time. He's used smokeless tobacco for the last five years, but yesterday was the day when he heard about the news of his former coach at San Diego State passing away. Now, he also told me that it is something that you think will never happen to you. He said he got through nine innings last night, and while it's a beginning, it is a great start. It is an example of how Tony Gwynn's legacy will live on. We also know that our dear friend Joe Garagiola would be very proud of Addison Reed. We continue here as we get set for first pitch between the Brewers and the Diamondbacks. The pitching matchup tonight, Kyle Loesch and Mike Bolsinger. Who's just called up? He'll take his turn in the Diamondbacks rotation. First pitch comes your way next. Stephen Bob have it for you here on Fox Sports Arizona. His fifth career big league start and his first since a loss to Milwaukee at Miller Park on May 5th. He is coming off a superb performance his last time out for the AAA Reno Aces. Coincidentally, that was against Nashville, the Brewers AAA affiliate, when Bolsinger had a career high 12 strikeouts back on June 11th. He is set to face Scooter Turnett and this lineup of Milwaukee Brewers. First, the report on Mike Bolsinger from his catcher tonight, Miguel Montero. Well, obviously, the only thing that we ask for him is just to stay focused, you know. He seems to kind of be in the space a little bit sometime, and it kind of make my work a little bit harder because I don't know if he's really on the game or we're really on the same page. And, but, you know, obviously, obviously, you know, hopefully throw the strikes, keep the ball down, and get early out. 
Mike Bolsing, your Arizona Ford starting pitcher. I guess the theme tonight, focus. Stay focused, yeah. Part of your job as a catcher is uh, to try to uh, gain the attention of that pitcher out there on the mound. Give him the confidence that you're calling the right pitches. And hopefully, as Mickey said, execute. Keep that ball down, both the cut fastball, the curve ball, the occasional straight changeup. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, one of the keys for Bull Singer, get this guy off the bases, Scooter Jeanette, who has done a terrific job as their new leadoff man, the second baseman. We are underway at Chase Field. The panels are closed. The roof is open. And Jeanette in there at 299 on the year. This is the latest June 17th that the roof has been open in a season since 2011. Martin Prado knocks that one down at third and on the edge of the grass. And quickly one down. Here is Ron Renicki's Brewers lineup. We see Jeanette at the top. Ryan Braun in that second spot in the lineup. Jonathan Lucroy batting third. Aramis Ramirez with a three-hit night last night, including a couple of RBI. Chris Davis in left field. Mark Reynolds at first base. Gene Segura at shortstop. Elian Herrera in center field. And right-hander Kyle Loesch on the mound for the Brewers. Well, despite the loss last night, the D-backs 8-3 in their last 11 against Ron Renneke's Milwaukee Brewers. That's since the start of last season. Ryan Braun. Strike one. Ted Barrett, the crew chief, is the plate umpire tonight. Braun, 285 and 10 homers. And again, we see that unusual, almost double hitch in Mike Bolsinger's giddy up out there. Yeah, just a little bit of deception, a little bit of distraction, uh, try to throw off the rhythm and timing of the opposing hitters. And front leg comes up, stops, comes up again, and then he fires through. One and two. Mike Bolsinger, four starts with the D-backs this year. One and two, the ERA was over six. And here's another look at the motion. Hesitation, and come on up with that left knee up near his chest and then drives toward home plate. This is only his second start here at Chase Field. He faced the Rockies here April 29th. Gave up four runs on nine hits in five innings. 2-2 two -two to Braun. All strike three. Good start for Mike Bolsinger. Two down. Mention that curveball. Uh, it's what we call a spiked curve. Uh, the index finger kind of sticks 20. up off the baseball. Jonathan Most of the throw. finger pressure is on that middle finger, so he can really pull down on that curveball. A pitch he throws about 32% of the time. He relies heavily on that cut fastball. He'll mix in occasional four seamer up above the top of the zone. As I mentioned, he does have a change up that he rarely uses. A tall order and getting out Jonathan Lucroy. The number three hitter in this Milwaukee lineup. There's strike one to Lucroy. Second in the National League in hitting it 335. And seventh in the league with that OPS just over 900. The spotlight's on you. Looks like a Glenn Close in the natural out there. All she's missing is that big white hat. The setting sun here in Arizona. And Mike Bolsinger says he's going to try and outsmart you out there on the mound. It's all about location for him. And part of that process for Bolsinger, pitching inside, something he really wasn't comfortable doing last year. It's a, been a difference maker for him, though, at times this season. Two balls, one strike to Jonathan Lucroy. Three and one. You know, you gave the numbers for Lucroy uh, having a fine offensive season, and there's a good reason for that. I watched him take batting practice with his Brewer teammates today, and 
Well, most of them were up there trying to see how many balls they could hit in Friday's front row sports grill. Jonathan Lucroy just spraying line drives around the field. Very controlled batting practice. Hits that one up in the air to right. Routine for Parra. A one, two, three, first. Good start for Mike Bolsing. A roof is open tonight at Chase. Chase Field on the mound for the Brewers. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher is the veteran right-hander Kyle Loge's 14th big league season and pitching better than ever. Here's Brewers skipper Ron Renneke. He attacks the zone with strikes and, uh, and he changes speeds well. Um, he always has the hitters on the defensive. Uh, where he gets into a little bit of trouble is when, when all of a sudden he's not command of the zone and he's get behind the count. But when he gets in a rhythm, uh, you'll see him go through a lot of innings in a row and, uh, and not give up anything. Off. Well, numbers on Kyle Lowe. He's been outstanding. Seven and two. The ERA right at three. Look at the whip right there. That's walks plus hits per innings pitch, which measures how many base runners a pitcher allows. Kyle Lowe's fifth best in the National League. Didi Gregorius leads it off. There's the strike on one. He'll rely heavily on a sinking fastball, also a slider. He'll mix in a changeup and a curveball, but uh, his, his manager said he just attacks that strike zone with everything he has, tries to get you to put the ball in play early in the count. And he jumps ahead of Gregorius 0 and 2. Loge has had very good command all season. He is walking fewer hitters this year. Than ever before in his career. Just 14 walks in 96 innings. Did he at 250 on the air with two homers? Well, Ted Barrett saying that ball clipped DD. And here we go again. This is kind of where we left off last night. Right field. Number this time eight. it goes to D-backs way. And the leadoff man's aboard. Colorado Parra. Slider inside. Might have hit a thread on that uh, left leg. Sticking off the uniform there. Hit by pitch is subject to review. Didi grabbed at that left leg uh, immediately. Obviously didn't take it flush on that back leg, but enough contact that he felt it. Ted Barrett heard it, so sends him on down to first base. Gerardo Parra. Kyle Lowe's working on the extreme first base side of that rubber. Base hit. Parra slaps it into left. 
The lineup for Kurt Gibson's Arizona Diamondbacks. It's our tire pro starting lineup. Top two on base already. Didu Gregorius on at second. Gerardo Parra with that base hit on at first. Paul Goldschmidt batting third. Miguel Montero batting in that cleanup spot this year has really slugged the ball well. Martin Prado at third base. David Peralta out in center field. Chris Owings at shortstop. Roger Kieschnick once again in left field. And right-hander Mike Bolsinger on the mound for the D-backs. Two on, nobody out for Paul Goldschmidt. Strike one. Goldie back on June 1st. The batting average dipped below 300 for the only day this season. And since then, he has raised his average 13 points in 13 games. Comes into tonight with a 10-game hitting streak. Two for four last night, a pair of singles. And during his 10 game streak, has four homers and seven RBIs. And look at this slugging percentage. Uh, three guys in tonight's ball game since May 19th. Chris Davis, a little bit of a surprise. Jonathan Lucroy, also a little bit of a surprise. Not uh, guys you would consider to be big time power hitters, but uh, on that list with Goldie. A chance to get to Kyle Loge early, which is not easily done. There are the numbers for Goldie during the 10 game streak. When anytime a team is uh, not going as well as they would like, and you talk to anybody around the ball club, they'll say, We're just not getting that big hit when we need it. That's been the case for the Diamondbacks over the last 10 games. A record at four and six, and they've hit 192 with runners in scoring position. Chance to uh, correct that right here. Two two misses, and it's full. So Goldie was down 0 and 2, and now it's 3 and 2. 323 with runners in scoring position this year. Of course, as a general rule, the negative numbers that we throw out here in the booth don't apply to Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be immune. Miguel yes. Montero on deck. Well, Goldie's done a nice job lately of just taking what they give him. Very few teams are willing to come inside, at least not where Goldie can get a good swing on it, just working away, away, away down there at the knees. Bases loaded, nobody out for the D-backs in the first. We just mentioned uh, everybody seems to be working Goldie low and away. Look at that smattering of pitches there. All of them down and on the outer third of the plate or even farther away from Paul Goldschmidt. Most teams uh, will give up a base hit to right field against Goldie, but they're not willing to challenge him on the inside part of the plate. When you get opportunities like this against a pitcher of this caliber, you need to strike while the iron is hot. And here's Miguel Montero. Right away, base is loaded, nobody out. Gregorius is the runner at third. Para at second and Goldie at first. Miggy, 273, 10 homers. Nice block by Jonathan Lucroy to get behind the hitter and keep that one in front of him. Well, you know that when you're catching a game for Kyle Loesch, you're going to be busy behind the plate. He likes to throw that curveball in the dirt, get some swings and misses, get some easy contact on the ground, and a lot of those curveballs are going to end up in the dirt. Montero, two homers career against Kyle Loesch. One and one. Montero won for four last night. He's hit in three straight.
Packers uh, in his career with the bases loaded for Miggy. Not so hot this year. One for six. He has driven in three runs with the bases loaded. Big hole on that left side of the infield with Segura almost directly behind the base at second. Ramirez playing well off the line, and we know Miggy's shot a lot of balls that direction lately. Two balls and two strikes. So 14 pitches so far for Kyle Lowe's, and we've talked about and you heard from Ron Renicky how he is always in excellent command that attacks the strike zone, but so far, seven balls and seven strikes. It's full three and two. Los really locked in on the bottom part of the zone. He's trying to stay away from Miggy as well. Some traffic on the bases will change the way you pitch guys occasionally. He might be normally very aggressive against Goldie and Miguel Montero, but not with guys on base. Down the left field line, but that one slices foul. This wouldn't be a bad time for Miggy to show off some of that opposite field power and find that gap in left center. Coming in, and it drops in front. Didi had to hold up, and he will score. One nothing, D-backs. RBI number 40 for Miguel Montero. Didn't exactly drive it to the opposite field, but that will work. Chris Davis in left field, and Ryan Braun in right field. Shaky defenders, they both play extremely deep at all times. They're more comfortable coming in on the ball, and that time Davis was playing so deep he couldn't get to that little floater off the bat of Miguel Montero. Lucky right there, fanned on that with that big old outfielder's glove. Fortunately for him, the ball hit him in the midsection stayed right there. And it's still bases loaded, nobody out. A run in, the hitter is Martin Prado. Prado, the batting average at 278. Ball one. Martin's number had dipped below 240 for the season back on May the 9th, but in 35 games since, he has hit over 320. Second, Jeanette Segura. Prado beats it out. Parra scores. 2 0 D backs. Fortunately, that ball not really hit hard enough for the Brewers to try to turn a double play. A little bit of a disjointed rhythm out there at second base. As the Brewers were messing around out there in the middle of the infield. Martin Prado legs it out for a fielder's choice RBI. One out, first and third, David Peralta. David Peralta through his first 15 major league games, hitting 328. Very good friends, Mike Bolsinger and Chase Anderson. Pitched together in the minor leagues for a long time. 1 0 to Peralta. And Kyle Lowe so far, 21 pitches and more balls than strikes. Boy, just nibbling. I mean, he 
even after the description by his manager Ron Renicky about a guy that likes to attack the strike zone get ahead early. He just seems to be nibbling away at the corners in the bottom of the zone here. See if they can turn two. The throw pulls Segura off the bag and they do get Prado. Goldschmidt scores from third and it's three nothing. Not a great throw there by Mark Reynolds at first. Play by a shortstop to save a throwing error right there and just does get his foot back on the bag ahead of Martin Prado. Well, it was hit hard. I think Reynolds had a little more time, really rushed that throw to second base. Oh, Segura stretching out. That's uh, kind of splits out there in the middle of the infield that'll put mm -hmm. you on the disabled list. Chris Owings. Owings 274, six homers. He's hit safely in five of his last six. Well, the first three reach for the D backs. They have all scored. Kyle Loge was excellent in his previous start. That was a no decision. What turned out to be a 5-1 win over the Mets at City Field last Thursday. He worked eight innings of four hit ball. Did not walk a batter and had three strikeouts. So it's been quite a different story so far here tonight. Fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Two balls and two strikes. Bounce to short, Segura. They get the force on Peralta, and that ends the first. But the D-backs get three. They lead it 3 nothing. Hey, fans, bring your kids to the ballpark on Sunday. Watch the D-backs and Giants. First 2,000 kids get a D-backs cereal bowl. Ask for the D-backs value pack. That includes a ticket, a hot dog, or a Subway sandwich, regular Pepsi, and a cookie, all for only $21. Get your tickets, dbacks.com slash value. First 5,000 kids get the cereal bowl. Nice. That's I like that. That's nice. It's raised on Cheerios. Donut seeds, we used to call them. 
And of course, while you're at the ballpark, vote Goldie. You got, oh, look at that. They got computers set up. All you got to do is well, just go over there and cast your ballot. Aramis Ramirez hits one to Mars. 3 1. Well, that looked like the tape we showed you from Bolsinger start at Miller Park. Mike Bolsinger has a three run lead early in this ball game, but for the life of me, I can't figure out why any pitcher throws a strike to Aramis Ramirez on the first pitch. He is a dead first ball hitter. You get it close to the strike zone, doesn't matter if it's a fastball or a breaking pitch, he's going to swing and swing hard. That ball was blasted to left field from our phantom cam right off the sweet spot. Upper deck over the D-backs bullpen. Ain't gonna hit that gentleman. Eighth of the year for Ramirez. It's a 3-1 ball game. Chris Davis. Davis 261, 11 homers. A two for four night for the Deer Valley High product last night. Had an RBI triple. Drove in two and scored a run. Two and one. Mike Bullsinger, you would think based on his minor league numbers, he's been doing a good job keeping the ball down, especially at those higher elevations at Reno and the Pacific Coast League. On the ground is short for Owings. One away in the second. Nine starts for the Aces at AAA this year. Look at these numbers for Mike Bolsinger. Outstanding. Five and one, a 273 ERA. Only 40 hits allowed in 52 innings. And this is the one that jumped out at me. Nine starts at Reno. He'd give it up only two homers. All right, that's remarkable. That Pacific Coast League, especially pitching uh, your home games at Reno, it's tough to keep the ball in the ballpark. You can miss hit a ball and get it out of there. This guy will hit some home runs. Mark Reynolds. He's got 13 this year, hitting 210. 0 for 3 with a walk last night. His home run uh, sailed well out of here into that group of people out there. And <laughs> the young lady had the right idea. Just cover up and hide. The oh, gentleman on the left wishes he would have covered up. And he gets Reynolds to chase. Two down. What pitchers call a short breaking ball. You don't want to throw it for a strike. You're ahead in the couch. You've got an aggressive swinger up there at the plate. You want to throw that short curve ball, the one that bounces on or just in front of home plate. That time Reynolds could not hold up. Reno Aces Nation in the house. Gene Segura. Brewer's shortstop in there at 243. That's a 50 point drop off from his all star season of a year ago. And the on base percentage right about 270. And he is really slumping. Yeah, while we have a moment, let's take a quick look at our Valley Honda dealers' keys to the game tonight. Yeah, Brewer's leadoff hitter, Scooter Jeanette. He's not a Harley, he's just a scooter. I see what you did there. Against the cheese heads, you got to avoid that Limburger inning when things don't smell quite the way they should. You have really <laughs> taken that theme and run with it. I can't wait to see what you come up with tomorrow. Maybe a Laverne and Shirley yeah, reference. You something. never know. Stay tuned. Sit on it, Ponzi. Two balls, one strike to Gene Segura. Segura last year, his first full season as the Brewers shortstop, led Milwaukee in batting average, hits, and stolen bases. He's been spiraling downward for a while lately.
couple of Limburger innings in that ball game last night for the D-backs bullpen. Gave up three in the eighth and three in the ninth. Took what was a very hotly contested game and turned it into a blowout. Segura drives that one the other way to the right field and he can run. Watch out! He'll head for third, and he's in there. Third triple this year for Gene Segura. He's got good speed, stole 44 bases last year, and he finds a gap and ends up at third base. A little bit of a shallow line that time from Gerardo Parr. That ball driven toward the gap, and the guy has good speed at the plate. You have to play it a little more cautiously. You know, a slow guy, maybe you try to get over there and uh, cut it off, and if you miss it, he's probably going to stop at second base, and then Gerardo compounded it by throwing the ball over both cutoff men. It just trickled back into the infield as Segura slides in on his belly with a triple. Elian Herrera. And Herrera. Actually faced Bolsinger in that game last week when Bolsinger was pitching for Reno and he struck out 12 Nashville hitters. Some of the Brewer guys were trying to remind him of that and he sort of went, I don't remember him. <laughs> a lot of hitters are like that, especially at the minor league level. You just show up every day. You know you're going to be in the lineup. You know you're going to get four or five at bats. It doesn't really matter who's out there on the mound, but this is one case where Herrera possibly should have paid a little more attention. And he's down here, 0 and 2. Elevated fastball there from Bolsinger, more than likely to set up the next curveball. Get a couple of weak swings like we saw on those first two from Herrera. I have a feeling he's going to go right back to that curveball. D.D. Gregorius. A little trouble getting it out of the glove, but he gets it in time to get Herrera, and they strand Segura at third. But the Brewers get on the board. Ramirez, his eighth home run. It's a 3 1 ball game. Cox Communications and Fry's Food Stores is set to take you to a D-backs game. Stop by this month's participating Fry's Food Store in Globe, and there you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus and get on board. Head out to the D-backs game on July 20th. For more information, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. Bob Brindley may try to hijack the bus and drive it out of state. So be careful. Make sure we don't violate any rules. That's a live picture right here. Fans still pouring into Chase Field to check out the D-backs and Brewers. And Arizona has a 3-1 lead as Roger Kieschnick leads off the second against Kyle Loach. Roger 
Kieschnick, a pair of hits last night, an RBI, he scored a run. His best night in a D-backs uniform so far. Two and two. Well, Diamondback fans are well aware of the slow start that the uh, D backs got off to this year. The Brewers were exactly the opposite. They played great baseball through the month of April. And fouled away as Keishnick lost his bat. They were 20 and 7 on April 29th, and since then, they've played 500 ball 22 and 22. Keishnick lost the bat last night as well. A big part of that, Bob, was Kyle Loge. I mean, they got off to that great start in the NL Central. And Loge, by May 21st, was 6 and 1. His ERA barely 2.5. They lead the Cardinals by 3.5 coming into tonight. Loge lost his first start of the year on April 1st. Didn't lose another one until June 6th. That was two starts ago at Pittsburgh. Saw a fly ball in the short left field. Segura's out there, one away. And Loge succeeds by being very efficient. He's not a big strikeout guy. His Number high for the season is nine. He's done that a couple of times. And he's gone over 100 pitches only seven times all year. But he goes deeper into games than most guys do. He has pitched at least into the seventh inning this season. Nine times in 14 starts. That's pretty good. Don't see that a lot these days. Yeah, and you mentioned his last outing against the Mets when eight innings gave up only four hits. One unearned run. Two starts before that, he shut out the Chicago Cubs. Complete game three hit. But the one in the middle there, the Pittsburgh Pirates banged him around pretty good. Five innings, nine hits, eight runs all earned. That's kind of an outlier this season for Kyle Loesch. He doesn't usually get hit that hard, doesn't usually give up that much. His 14th big league season. He was with Minnesota, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, St. Louis, and now Milwaukee. Olsinger lifts this one along the line and right in the corner for Braun. Two down. Loesch probably doesn't get the credit he deserves. I mean, uh, there was a time in his career where he was described as a serviceable middle of the rotation guy. He is much better than that. Go back since the beginning of the 2011 season, he's fourth in the National League in wins, third in winning percentage, second in walks per nine inning. Only Cliff Lee has a lower rate of walks per nine inning than Kyle Loesch. Strike one to Didi. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run his first time up, although it didn't appear on our replay that the pitch actually hit him. One of those where maybe it got a thread on the uniform. Didi since he rejoined the D-backs from AAA Reno. Hitting 286 in seven games. That includes a pair of homers. And making his third start this year at second base. Played 38 games at second with Reno. Started less than 20 at short, so he's... Seen a fair amount of action over there this year, at both levels. And that after he played only four games at second base his entire minor league career in the Reds organization. Drives this one to center field, Herrera. And Loge after that rocky first works a one, two, three second. D-backs lead the Brewers, three, one.
First 3 1. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly, Jody Jackson back with you. Kyle Loge leads off the Milwaukee third against Mike Bolsinger. This pitch swing and Chris Owings has to plant and throw and throws him out. Does he have enough arm for you to play that, uh, this position at this level? Well, I think he does, absolutely. Uh, maybe a little less than D.D. Gregorius, uh, but not too many guys throw like D.D. does. But, yeah, I think Chris Owens has plenty of arm, and he's also got very quick feet, which gets him into position to use his arm uh, as fast as any shortstop we've seen this year. There's a lot of similarities between Chris Owings and Scooter Jeanette. Jeanette, a 16th-round pick out of high school in Sarasota, Florida. Owings, a first-rounder from South Carolina, but both small guys and both prospects who have already hit and hit everywhere they've been. Jeanette, like CO, kept making a steady climb up his organization's ladder, up a level each year. And both guys, as high school picks, by the time they got to the big leagues as youngsters, they put in time. And Jeanette had more than 2,000 plate appearances as a pro when he was called up. And he rounds out there, two down. And the same for CO. By the time he got here, you think, well, he's just a baby. But he's had 2,000 plate appearances as a professional. Yeah, those guys that start uh, out of high school, you, know, you get that schooling at the low minor league levels. And for both of these guys, as you said, they moved rather quickly through the organization, but did make stops and had success everywhere they played. No, nowhere else to send them but other than to the big leagues. So get them up here and see what they can do. And that's the case. Things usually work out pretty well. Ryan Braun struck out looking his first time. So Braun right now in a three for 31 slump. And sure enough, first pitch drives it into center. So three for 31, but then he had a good night last night. A walk, couple of hits, a two run triple, and he's a one for two tonight. Ryan Braun doesn't figure to be slumping very long. No. We've talked about that with some other opponents this year that uh, went into a series with them slumping. You just want to let them stay quiet till they get out of town and then bust out on somebody else. Two outs in the inning. I got to believe Braun's going to try to pick a pitch to run on right here. Six out of eight this season in stolen bases. Luke Roy. Under the glove of Gregorius and Braun will stop at second. Two hard hit balls up the middle off Mike Bolsinger. And we saw what Aramis Ramirez did last time. Hit one into the upper deck above the D-backs bullpen and left. Watch the first pitch. He a WW for you? Pretty much. I mean, he will take his walks uh, depending on game situation, but with runners in scoring position, he is not interested in drawing a base on balls right here. This guy has been a run producer from the day he got to the big leagues. Big night last night, three for four, a two run double. He scored twice. And Homer in his first at bat tonight. There's his strike. Be careful, sir. <laughs> One of them bailed. <laughs> they were four last time. High in the air, left center field. Peralta underneath. Old Singer strands two, keeps it a 3 1 ball game. Century Link, your link to what's next. Do up for the D backs, Parra, Goldie, and Miggy.
Titans pitched. The names on the left-hand side of your screen in order, the National League leaders in whip. And the Diamondbacks have faced the top seven guys in this category all lately. And so far, they are one in seven. The guy right in the middle there is the man on the mound right now, Kyle Lowe. So far, so good. They lead Lowe's 3-1. But, uh, boy, Cueto, Wainwright, Aaron, Hudson, Hamill, Beckett, hadn't gone well. Uh, you know going into those games it's going to be a struggle to put runners on the plate and uh, that has been the case against the D-backs this year. They got the win against Beckett Sunday at Dodger Stadium so they can make it two for two against the guys on that list here tonight. Strike one to Gerardo Parra. He singled and scored his first time. So when you say boy it seems like we face a, an ace all the time. Well you know we kind of do. It's just sort of been like that. Just kind of depends on how the rotation rolls around, where the off days are, not only for your team, but for the team you're playing against. Sometimes you get lucky and you miss some of those guys, but other times uh, you bump right into them. Saw Jason Hamill from the Cubs on that list. A little bit of a surprise. He's having a nice season, and you know, the way the Cubs are operating at this time will probably be the next guy to be traded out of there for some prospects. But uh, I know Jason Hamill gave up at least one hit and one run Last night. I'm talking about the Stanton home. That was impressive. Man, watch this. I mean, that ball came off his bat and looked like it was going to be a line drive right at the first baseman, and it cleared the wall in right. That's one of the hardest hit balls I've ever seen. John Man. Carlos Stanton. Chopper to Reynolds at first. He'll take it himself. One away in the third. There's opposite field power, and then there's John Carlos Stanton. Let's take a look again. Uh, Hanging breaking ball up and out over the plate. Just a laser. Your physics would tell you the angle that that ball came off his bat. There's no way it can carry 340 feet, but it did. Oh, that is scary power. Speaking of which, Goldie walked and scored his first time, trying to extend what is right now a 10 game hitting streak. Well, last time Loge was ahead on Goldschmidt 0 and 2, and Goldie ended up working a walk. One pitch to Paul Goldschmidt. Watch Kyle Loesch react. Oh, he looks away. Man, did I get away with one right there. Sometimes you get lucky. That pitch caught way too much plate, and Goldie put a good swing on it, just fouled it back. And he's back even, two and two. Last time he ended up drawing a base on balls and scoring in that first inning after he started to count 0 and 2, ran into 3 and 2. We've seen him do that so often. I do it again here. Another walk to Goldie. Kyle Loge, 14 starts this year, had walked only 14 batters all season. He has walked Goldie twice in two at bats tonight. I think it's pretty apparent uh, the Diamondback hitter that they decided they're not going to let beat him. <laughs> Miguel Montero, an RBI single in the first. Montero back in the cleanup spot tonight. Seven of his ten home runs this year have come when he's at fourth in the order. Roof open tonight. Panels are closed. Nice and comfortable here at Chase Field. Great night to beat the ballpark. 
Miguel Montero lifts that very high in the air to right. He got under it just a bit, though, and Braun has it at the wall. You saw Ryan Braun's reaction there. Close. I mean, the way Braun played this ball back at the there wall in right field made it tough for Goldie. Paul Goldschmidt had initially gone about a third of the way to second base when he saw Braun start to camp on the warning track. He went back to first base a few steps to tag up, and then Braun looked like he wasn't going to make the play. So Goldie took a couple more steps back towards second base, ultimately ends up at first where he stands with two outs in the inning for Martin Prado. Yeah, had Braun just gone back and camped under the ball, Goldie probably tags it first and tries to advance. Prado lines this right to Braun. And that's the inning. Through three at Chase Field, he backs lead the Brewers 3-1. I'm back here in uh, Arizona since I got traded, so I'm excited to come back and play. And it's actually my first time in the visitors' locker room, so uh, it's a little different, a little weird being on this side. But uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And that is our Geico quote of the game from former Diamondback Mark Reynolds. And Mark told me that his memories here, obviously the playoff run in 07, he was called up in 2007. He hit a home run in the NLDS against Chicago and then went on to the NLCS, hit a home run in the series with the Rockies. But, you know, Reynolds had 24 home runs in 09 before the All-Star break. That was certainly a memorable uh, run in 09 when he ended the season with over 40 homers. And Jody, the thing that they have really liked about Mark Reynolds in Milwaukee this year has been his defense. He's played both first and third base for the Brewers as Chris Davis leads off the inning. Ron Renicki said the Brewers heard reports from guys that played with Reynolds that he was a lot better than people thought. And then he says that so far they have definitely seen that. He's been good for them. Montero will complete the strikeout. That is the third for Bull Singer, and here is Mark Reynolds. First baseman, Mark Reynolds. It's Mark Reynolds back in 09 for the Diamondbacks. Tape measure blast into left field. Friday's front row sports grill that time. That's a fair ball. Bolsinger picks it up and throws him out. Same batter. 
<laughs> Strange game. A guy can go up there and hit the ball 500 feet one time and we'll tap her back to the mound the next time. It's a live shot in the Friday's front row sports grill. They may have been anticipating another Reynolds uh, home run up there, but uh, fell a little shy that time. Just a tad. Two quick outs for Bolsinger. Gene Segura, who tripled his first at bat. Segura 0 for 4 last night. He and Reynolds were the only Milwaukee starters without a base hit. Mike Bolsinger very efficient so far. 42 pitches, 32 for strikes. Called strike three, four strikeouts for Mike Bolsinger, and he leads it 3 1. The Friday's front row sports grill here at Chase. Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications. Bundle and save with Cox. Mike Bolsinger handed a 3-0 lead after one. So far, he has made it stick. Ramos Ramirez is eighth home run. The only Brewer run so far. And it's 3-1 D-backs as we start. The home half of the fourth. David Peralta leads it off against Kyle Loge. Peralta, Owings, Kieschnick, 6, 7, and 8 for the D-backs. Peralta drove in a run his first time up. Hard hit to first, right to Reynolds. When the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Chris Owings. 0 for 1 so far tonight. CEO had a pair of hits last night. 2 for 4. He scored a run. Where do you think he fits in best in the order, Chris Owings? It, it seems like he hits no matter where he goes. I think it depends on the guy's around him in the order. I think Chris is a guy that could easily hit at the top of the order because of his speed. 
Well, if you've got guys you like in the one and two spots in the order, certainly Goldie's our three hitter. Maybe most of the time is the four hitter, and uh, I think seven is a good spot. Either one, two, or seven. Once again, depending on the other guys in the lineup on a given day and how it all best fits together. We've seen Parra lead off a lot of the time. Lately, more batting second than lead off. Dee getting some looks in the lead off spot, and Chris Owens has kind of been moving around, but he hits wherever he is. And Chris Owens will try for two. He's in there. A hustle double for CO is 14th. It must be nice to be that fast. He just made up his mind out of the batter's box. I'm going to force them to make a perfect throw to get me at second base. You could see Herrera kind of shying away from that ball. Herrera is uh, really an infielder by trade, and CO just didn't hesitate whatsoever. Ends up in scoring position here for Roger Kishnick. A look from Fox Sports Phantom Cam. How's the slide? Slide is good. Notice how he used that left leg, hits the bag, stops his momentum. He's not tumbling out into shallow center field. He's not breaking bones. <laughs> That's a good slide. Roger Kishnick popped up his first time. That's the first passing grade I think I've seen from you. Well, I've given a Goldie time. a lot of passing grade. No. Goldie always slides well. Hits that bag with the front foot, stops his momentum, immediately finds where the baseball is in case he can advance another 90 feet. And now Chris trying to uh, apply the sock puppet down there on the hand as Kieschnick steps in. CO's having a tough time getting that thing wrapped up down there. First, Reynolds will take it himself again. Owens to third. We'll see if Mike Bolsinger can sneak one through. Is that Johnny Cash? I didn't really hear enough of it there. It's odd to. It's an interesting selection. Johnny Cash, Reno. Owen two. Through four, D backs lead Milwaukee 3 1.
using the hashtag AZ fan photo for your chance to have your picture shown. And our game broadcast coming up, provided it passes muster with the Brenly Committee, mm -hmm. brought to you by AT&T. Mm -hmm. Who's uh, manning the floor tonight? Well, we got Webby back on board tonight. Uh, oh, gosh. He's still, gonna in, still in probation, and uh, Jeff Munn is making some noise like he wants to get involved with the committee. So we'll, he we'll does. Webby be in charge tonight, but uh, look for Jeff Munn to become more involved moving forward. By the way, our investigative reporter Dennis Lamb is uh, found out. It's a uh, Mike Bolsinger's uh, walk-up song was uh, "Ain't No Grave." It was indeed Johnny Cash, the Man in Black. There you go. So. Four punch outs in the game for Mike Bolsinger. Couple looking, couple swinging. He's had that big curveball working. Able to bounce it in the dirt like that when he wants to. Once again, right there on a check swing. And then just freezes Gene Segura with a fastball in the inside corner of the plate. Well, as we showed you earlier, he had very good numbers this year at Reno. And mixed results at the big league level. He had that outstanding start at Wrigley Field in Chicago. And last time he pitched in a big league game it was against these Brewers at Miller Park got knocked around a bit but so far so good Elian Herrera leads off the fifth Herrera Loge and Jeanette eight nine and one Herrera back in there in center field tonight the Brewers being extra careful with Carlos Gomez's hamstring Gomez wanted to play tonight, and if Wade Miley had started the left-hander, uh, it might have played Gomez, but they figured since the righty is in there, might as well give him one more day. We're watching Gomez take batting practice today. There's nothing wrong with his swing. Let's <laughs> just say that. Whew. He had a round of batting practice. He had six consecutive home runs, two of them into Friday's front row. Get on a hop of DD, easy out of first base. He hit two. Just to the left of straightaway center, and then hit one in the RamTrucks.com pool area. Just flipping balls out of here, and all in a row. Oh, that yeah. was the thing. One after another, after another. I, I, you know, they tell stories about Babe Ruth taking batting practice, and there would be three balls in the air at one time. One would just be landing on the other side of the fence. The other one would be in midair, and the other one would be just coming off his bat. I don't know if I believe that, but Carlos Gomez tried to do that today, and he came close. The problem with Gomez is his shots got out of here so quickly that <laughs> they landed extra fast. They were hit so hard. It was something to see. So we uh, anticipate we'll see Gomez in the lineup for Milwaukee tomorrow. One and one on Kyle Loach. Rounded out his first time. There's Carlos Gomez. Got a little, a little hamstring. Not a big deal, but they're being extra cautious and with the season he is having, and you understand why he has been tremendous. Hitting 313 this year. In fact, Gomez right now has got a 13 game hitting streak going, and he has reached base safely in 30 straight games. Only the eighth time in Brewers history that's happened. But he has sat out the first two so far. Two and two on Loge. Five strikeouts for Mike Bolsinger. Fans enjoy an afternoon game here at Chase on Thursday. D-backs and Brew Crew every weekday afternoon game. Don't forget, you get matinee ticket prices. So we give you a break on the tickets, and you'll find everyday value pricing on merchandise and concessions as well. So it's a great value item. Come on out and join us here at Chase on Thursday. $1.50 hot dogs, $4 beers. And matinee pricing for tickets. Visit dbacks.com slash matinee. Scooter Jeanette, 0 for 2. Six starts as the Brewers' new leadoff man. Scooter Jeanette has 11 hits, so he's hitting over 420 in his first run in the leadoff spot. One of those hits, this homer last night in the third off Brandon McCarthy. Well, not only will he give you a pesky at bat, take his walks, get on base, and set the table for the guys in the middle, but occasionally he'll surprise you with his power. He hit that ball a long way last night. 0-2. That one gets through. Bull singer, Chris Owens! Can't quite make the play. 
But he showed off his range right there, getting well behind the bag at second and made it close. And just about anybody else in this Brewers lineup running, and you may get the out at first base. Long run up the middle of the field. Tremendous body control to stop his momentum. Plant that left foot and come up firing. Even though that did not result in an out, that's a highlight real play right there. That snaps a string of six in a row set down by Bolsinger. So Jeanette on first, two outs, Ryan Braun, one for two, single his last time up. Strike one. Scooter Jeanette down there with Garth Orge, Brewers first base coach. Ed Cedar coaching in third. Bounce to short, Owings. D backs lead Milwaukee 3-1 as we head to the home half of the fifth. Century Link, your link to what's next coming up. Well, it's the top of the order, including Paul Goldschmidt, who is right now an all-star. Well, everybody knows that one. Next broadcast Saturday, fans and viewers will be able to join the D-backs efforts to vote Goldie into the All-Star game. Coverage begins at 6.30 with D-backs live pregame. And then the Diamondbacks and the Giants only on Fox Sports Arizona. That's Saturday. Tune in for that. D.D. Gregorius leads off the fifth. D-backs organizational depth in the middle infield has been getting a lot of attention recently. And well, Kevin Towers has always insisted the best defensive shortstop in the system is Nick Ahmed. And he's been playing shortstop for Reno. He was a middle infield combo with Didi while Didi was with the Aces. And KT said last week that he gets calls every day on Nick Ahmed from probably 20 other major league ball clubs that think Ahmed is big league ready right now at shortstop. So there's a lot of depth there. Very high in the air right center field. Broad and Herrera. Who wants it? It'll be Herrera. And Nick Ahmed, the glove has always been sensational. The question has been the bat. He's hitting over 300 at Reno and getting on base at nearly a 400 clip. And there was Kevin Towers with Mike Fetters. Arado Parra singled and scored in the first. He's one for two. Diamondbacks have only had one hit since the first inning. That was the Owings double with one out in the fourth. So far, 
Three runs on three hits. There's a strike on one. <laughs> Rose tried the kick save and a beauty. Segur is there. Two down. Here's Goldie. It can help you at times and it can really hurt you at other times if you deflect it away from your shortstop or second baseman and they can't make a play. But it's just an instinctive move on the part of a pitcher. We see a lot of guys throw their bare hand up trying to knock down comebackers. That time low tried to kick save. Out of ability. He's been watching the World Cup. No one one to Paul Goldsmith who has walked twice. Goldie with a 10 game hit streak on the line tonight. You are watching any of the uh, World Cup? No. I gave it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing against the World Cup. It's very exciting. I know a lot of guys are super into it, but I've just had other things to do. Oh, we're a busy man over there. Busy, you got to look busy, at all these busy. fan photos and yeah. delegate. Got a full plate. Players have a whole thing going. They got entries in the World Cup pool. So they're following along. Uh, Gerardo Parra was out there the other day with a soccer ball in the outfield. I saw in Los Angeles, uh, Didi Gregorius and Martin Prado had a soccer ball in front of the dugout at Dodger Stadium. And uh, I don't know what they call that when they're just kind of bouncing it off their knee and their foot. And, Dribbling. You know, but the ball never touched the ground. You know, they were kicking it back and forth, and Didi would kick it up in the front and then kick it with his heel and then bounce it with his knee over to Martin, who would do the same thing. Goldie walks for the third time in three plate appearances tonight. And he has uh, had a full count all three times. National League all star balloting leaders at this point. John Carlos Stan should get about a million just for that home run he hit in the ball game last night. Leading the league at RBIs, the Marlins outfielder. Miguel Montero, an RBI single in the first. He's one for two. Don't forget All-Star Game July 15th on Fox from Target Field in Minneapolis. There's a unusual defensive alignment here with the Goldie on first and two outs for Montero. You've got Scooter Jeanette out there well on the outfield grass and Gene Segura the shortstop behind the bag at second. Now, some teams have been a little more open to the exaggerated shifts defensively. Certainly the Brewers and Ron Renicki at the top of that list. Nicky's been on quite a run lately. 12 RBIs in his last 12 games, including five homers. This is upstairs, two and one. It's an inviting target for a left-hand hitter here at Chase Field. After throwing more balls than strikes very early in the ball game, has become a strike throwing machine lately. And he's given up only the one hit since the first. Drop the second, slowly hit. Jeanette has to come well in from the outfield grass and can't make a play. We showed you he was playing back in very shallow right field, had a long way to come in there and just couldn't find the handle. A lot of times that shift will take base hits away from the hitter, but this time I think it uh, certainly allowed Miggy to reach just a long run for Jeanette coming straight in. This is a play he's not used to making. Coming straight in on a dead run from shallow right field and.
Just couldn't successfully make that exchange into the throwing hand. They rule that E4, the error on the Brewers' second baseman. So the D-backs have two on, two out for Martin Prado. Paul Goldschmidt is the runner at second. Miguel Montero at first. And Prado 0 for 2. He did drive in a run with a fielder's choice in the first. Base hit. They will wave Paul Goldschmidt, and he will score the throwers to third. And Montero is in there. Not the prettiest slide ever. It's 4-1 D-backs, and we'll check on Miggy. Paul Schreiber, the third base umpire, took a long look at that one before declaring him safe. Miggy into third base really jams that right knee hard into the ground as he went into his slide, but able to keep a foot on the bag. Came up just a little bit short, really had to reach out there with that left leg to get on the base before Ramirez could apply the tag. That kind of reminded me of the play, and I hate to say it, on which Cody Ross broke his hip last year when he kind of planted like that and then fell over forward. Extension with that left leg. Yeah, fortunately got a little bend in the knee right there to give him a little bit of a shock absorber as he came down on that bag at third. 0 oh 2 now on David Peralta. One more look. Ooh. Loge gets the strikeout, but the Diamondbacks get another run, and through five, they lead Milwaukee 4-1. Welcome back to Chase Field. Big homestand here in June, and we're getting the votes for Paul Goldschmidt going here. And the Diamondbacks are helping out. First of all, we got the sign out here, Vote Goldie. We've got six computer stations here in Section 132 on the main concourse, really encouraging fans to come out and vote. Of course, you can go paper ballot all the way, but 35 votes are, is what you're allowed on MLB.com if you have an account. If you don't, 25 votes. So fans are coming out, and this is interesting because we know D-backs fans are a slam dunk, but we have some Brewers fans here. What is your name, sir? Kevin. Kevin, you and I talked earlier. You were you were contemplating voting for Mark Reynolds, which I really had to question. What, what, what are you going with now? Uh, I have to vote for uh, Goldschmidt. There you go. It was uh, a convincing argument there. 
<laughs> well, he's looking at the numbers, guys. It's right here in front of them. And so we have, you know, the visiting fans, or I should say locals that maybe are, are cheering for the other team. We're turning these fans over to Goldie's side. Well, Jody, we're getting one vote at a time here. And now Paul Goldschmidt leading the vote totals among National League first basemen for the All-Star Game. July 15th on Fox from Target Field in Minneapolis. Jonathan Lucroy leads off the sixth. And well, it was kind of a mad scramble earlier in the ball game. We showed up expecting Wade Miley out there. It's been Mike Bolsinger and so far against uh, the National League Central leaders. Bolsinger has kept him to one run through five. And Miley will start tomorrow. Chase Anderson on Thursday as they try to fill that Royal rotation spot. And just slide everyone back a day. Yeah, I heard you talking with Jeff Munn on Diamond Talk after the ball game last night. A uh, very important factor in plugging a hole in that rotation is whose day is it to throw in the minor leagues and perhaps when Bronson Arroyo's turn came up they didn't like any of the options of guys who were available to pitch on that day. Mike Bolsinger scheduled to throw today so this seemed to be the easy fix bring Mike up pitch him today push everybody back a day. You hear all kinds of thing on things on Diamond Talk 98-7 after every home game. Yeah, fans think we'll just call up the best guy, right? Whoever's doing the best in the minor leagues, just bring him up. Well, it's not that easy. He might have pitched eight innings last night. You know, the best guy. So you have to take the guy whose turn it is, or make a slight adjustment as the Diamondbacks have done to get Mike Bolsinger up here, who has some big league experience. Luke Roy drives one to left field and out of here a home run, his seventh. And it's a 4-2 ball game. And the home run bug that bit Bolsinger the last time he faced the Brewers last month at Miller Park is just about the only thing he's done wrong tonight. Well, this guy is red hot. I mean, just tomahawks a high pitch right there. Surprising power for a little guy. Really gets good extension, gets some backspin on that ball. You go back to the day of May 10th. He's first in the National League in batting average, first in slugging percentage, first in hits, and tied for first with Paul Goldschmidt with doubles since May 10th. That's how hot he's been. And he has now hit safely in 12 of his last 13 games. He's two for three tonight. And for the season, second in the National League in hitting. Came into the ball game at 335, and so far he's two for three. And oh, by the way, he's catching every day. Yeah. Ramirez hit one to Mars back in the second. He's one for two. Watch where this one lands. There's only two guys left now. First, there were four. <laughs> Last time we showed you, there were three. Pretty soon, the guy in the red shirt on the end is going to be the last man standing or sitting in this case. He was the one that got hit by the mm -hmm. home run, too. 2 2. There's the strikeout. That's six for Mike Bolsinger. Good location on that breaking ball. Down. Left fielder. Ramos Ramirez is a real good breaking ball hitter when you throw it for a strike, but as susceptible as anybody when you lead him out of the strike zone the way Bolsinger did right there. One away, a run in. Here's Chris Davis, who's 0 for 2. Running around the short, Chris Owen spins and throws. Third out. Game three of the series tomorrow night for you here on Fox Sports Arizona. Look at our Chevron upcoming matchup. Matt Gauza pitches First for Milwaukee. Base, Wade Miley, the left-hander, left pushed back a day for the D-backs. Diamondbacks live pregame show comes your way at six. Mark Reynolds over two. He has struck out once. Reynolds has a nickname mentioned this last night in Milwaukee. They call him Grumpy. 
because apparently after he hit his first home run this season with the Brewers, he gave Ed Cedar a handshake but didn't smile. And Reynolds says now everybody, even Ron Renicky, calls him grumpy. <laughs> Figured he'd just uh, embrace the nickname and not fight it. That's usually a good choice. If you let your teammates know you you don't like it. <laughs> oh man, they're gonna have shirts printed up, billboards. They actually did that. There was a grumpy T-shirt yeah. that appeared in the clubhouse. <laughs> but he's been a popular guy in there. John Lucroy says Reynolds is he's one of those guys who walks in and always looks like he's in a bad mood, but he's not. And Lucroy said you need a guy like that. Everybody gets along with him. He's funny. Lucroy says uh, one of those guys is kind of a dirty, grouchy dude, a gruff. Player in person in general, but a good guy to have on your team. Another guy that falls into that category, at least based on outside observation, Adrian Beltre. Yeah. Always looks like he's mad. Unless he's messing with his buddy there at shortstop. Well, he gets very upset when you touch his head. Can't touch his head. Adrian Beltre. Doesn't like that. 2 2. Nice hop for Martin. Prado long throw. And Bolsinger retires three in a row following the Lucroy homer. It's 4 2 as we head to the home half of the six. Uh, last night, apparently, hey, would you sign my uh, cast? Well, apparently, it uh, comes apart in pieces. Didn't get to see who signed it, though. It? Nice work. Chris Owings. Had a double his last time. Huh? I, I think Dennis Lamb might have signed it for him. <laughs> Dennis is usually wandering around the ballpark. She'll never wash it again. Fortunately, Chris Owings turning away from that ball might have taken a little bit of it off the back of the left shoulder right there before that thumped him in the uh, helmet. And Crenshaw out quickly to have a look at the Diamondback shortstop. Is that what you're supposed to do? Turn sort of your back away from the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. Turn away from the pitch. Try to pull your head down into your shoulders. They call it doing a turtle. See a turtle pull his head back into his shell. That's what a hitter should try to do while you're turning away from the ball. But, um, and we saw Ken Crenshaw go through this discussion with Ender and Ciarte last week in Houston. Yep. 
Apparently he got the answers he was looking for. Fortunately, because of the action that Chris Owens took in that batting batter's box, it, it didn't hit him flush. It was a little bit more of a glancing blow. Uh, talking it over with Mark Reynolds down there at first base. He appears to be all right. Scary moment. Second D back batter to be hit by a pitch tonight. D.D. Gregorius was hit to lead off the ball game for Arizona. So Owings is aboard to open up the sixth. And here's Roger Kieschnick. That one has fouled away. Kieschnick 0 for 2 so far. And Bullsinger was out in the on deck circle. Bullpen is quiet. Looks like he's just going to have a conversation with Kirk Gibson. And the way Bolsinger has been pitching, with the exception of the two homers, as long as the pitch counter is under control, get him back out there. He might be uh, asking for the various scenarios. If there's two guys on and nobody out, I know I'm going to bunt. What happens if we make an out here with a runner at first? What happens if we move the runner to second with one out? Kirk Gibson probably said, go stay in the on deck circle. We'll let you know. <laughs> Just pay attention to Glenn Sherlock. He'll put the sign on for you. Lowe's now over 90 pitches. One one is in there for a strike. One and two. Kieschnick, another guy called up from Triple-A Reno, played 59 games there this year, hit 280 with nine homers. There goes Owings. Kieschnick listed in the air to left center field. Long run for Herrera, and he tracks it down. And Owings will have to scamper back to the bag. We've seen Herrera, guy they're trying to really convert into an outfielder, but he's shown that he can cover both gaps. Pitcher, Mike Bolsinger. He has good speed. The question, uh, you know, just because he has good speed doesn't mean he's going to be a good outfielder. Uh, it's more the lines that he takes to get the fly balls in those gaps in the outfield. Seems to have a pretty good nose for the baseball. And here is Bolsinger. Ramirez in on the grass at third. Another one up around the head. Strike. Ramirez still in almost halfway at third. One and two. Goldsinger tonight has flied out and grounded out 0 for 2. And he strikes out. Two down. Hey fans, follow every Diamondbacks game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replays, scores, stats, audio, game of the day, and much more. Download on the App Store or visit dbacks.com. Two down for D.D. Gregorius. Hit by a pitch and scored a run his first time up. He also is flat out twice. Bullpen still quiet, so it looks like Mike Bolsinger will get the seven. Max 
action in the Milwaukee bullpen. Brandon Kinsler, the right hander. Pitcher spot is due up third in the top of the seventh for Milwaukee. And Loge about to throw pitch number 100 tonight. Oh, and two to Didi. A hundred pitches for Kyle Lowe, sixty three for strikes. He backs have an out hit six to four, but they lead it four two. High on the season for Losha, 110. That came back on April 18th against the Pirates. Six in the third innings in that ball game. Now he's so efficient, he doesn't often get into triple digit pitch counts. He's been over 100 pitches in a game only six times all year. Two and two. Owings takes off. Didi gets just a piece of it. Well, this is the one that will rattle your cage. I, I joke about it. Most of the time, it doesn't really bother a catcher to take a foul ball off the mask. But when you're anticipating that throw to second base, that's the last thing on your mind. Didi just got a piece of that one, changed the direction right into the mask of Lucroy. That'll rattle your teeth. Another 2 2. Owings holds. Gregoria strikes out. We are through six. Diamondbacks lead Milwaukee 4 2. Starter today, and uh, boy, has he pitched pretty well with the exception of two home run balls. But so far, six innings of work, two runs on six hits. He has not walked a batter. He's got six strikeouts. He is our APS Energy All Star. Done a real nice job as an emergency call up starter tonight. And sometimes that's the best way. Don't give him any advance warning. Hey, you're up, you're in, go get him. Better than sitting up here for three or four days thinking about, oh, I got to start. Coming up later. Overanalyze the opposing lineup, overthink everything. Just go out there and pitch your game. Gene Segura, the shortstop, leads off the seventh. Bottom third of the Milwaukee order against Bolsinger, who opens up this inning only at 73 pitches. Segura, a triple in the second. He's one for two. The 
This is well hit to center. It backs up Peralta. Still backing up at the track at the wall. And it bounces off the base of the wall. Segura's already got one triple. He'll head for third. He's got four triples this year. Two of them tonight. He may be slumping a little bit this year, but man, can he run? He put a charge on that ball to straightaway center field, chasing Peralta all the way to the wall. For Segura got a favorable hop out there. That ball hit the warning track, then the fence, and bounced straight up in the air. Really turned it on as he got to second base and goes in with a head first slide that was totally unnecessary. Easy triple that time for Segura. Herrera looks at ball one. Segura was 0 for 4 last night. Came into the ball game tonight 5 for 46, but he's 2 for 3 tonight with a pair of triples. Two and 0. Looks like the D-backs bullpen is getting busy. Bullsinger 77 pitches, 54 for strikes. Sanderson Ford bullpen, the right hander Evan Marshall. Miguel Montero wants to one slow things down here to give Marshall some time and two talk to Bolsinger who really really looks shaky here in this inning. And it would be a shame to waste what's been a tremendous effort with a couple of pitches left up here at the tail end of your outing. It's back to that focus that Miguel Montero was talking about uh, when he gave us the scouting report on Bolsinger in the pregame. Every pitch means something. 3 0. And there for a strike. Martin Prado playing a step in on the grass at 30s, even with the runner Segura down there. Center field, Peralta coming in. Segura tags. Throw is offline. It's a one run ball game. Opportunity for David Peralta coming straight in from his position in center field. Unfortunately, as he unleashes that throw to home plate, from our vantage point, you could clearly see it. It started on line to home, but with that tailing action, took Miggy up the first baseline, allowing Segura to score. Lyle, Lyle, Lyle Overbay Lose. announced as the pinch hitter for Kyle Loge, and that will be it for Mike Bolsinger. Pitching change back after this.
Blake Effort in a spot start for the Diamondbacks. He leaves with one out in the seventh, leading 4-3, and he gives way to rookie right-hander Evan Marshall. And I think at the start of this ball game, all of us would have signed up for those numbers. Absolutely. A couple of solo home runs. Score a triple in this inning and then the sack fly. Better throw. They might cut that run down at the plate. And uh, Mike Bolson is still in the ball game, but uh, with a one run game, a dangerous left handed hitter in Lyle Overbay at the plate. Kurt Gibson goes to his sinker baller, Evan Marshall. Bolsinger gave up seven hits, two homers, and two triples. And now it's Marshall who will face Overbay with one out, 221 and a couple of home runs. Overbay three for nine as a pinch hitter this year with a pair of RBIs. Five seasons with the D-backs, originally an 18th round draft pick by Arizona. Traded to Milwaukee following the 03 season in the Nucci Varner deal. <laughs> Marshall jumps ahead 0 2. I think that Sexton was involved in that. Yeah, yeah. And a few other players, but. He responded the following year with Milwaukee, hit 53 doubles at 301 in 2004. Eventually did come back to the D backs in 2011, part of 2012. One and two. Overbay, good year with the Yankees last season, hit 240, 14 homes. Played 142 games, he played all the time. And has not been able to come close to that production so far in Milwaukee. His 14th season in the big leagues at the age of 37. Two and two. And given his choice, Lyle Overbay likes the ball out over the plate where he can uh, either shoot it to the gap in left center or pull it to the gap in right center. You mentioned those doubles numbers. He was a doubles machine earlier in his career. Overbay actually started last spring with the Red Sox, signed as a free agent, but was released by Boston. At the tail end of spring training, signed by the Yankees the very same day. That one is on the ground. Didi playing well over toward the bag at first. And Overbay has a pinch hit single. See where Second Dee has shifted. Scooter Chris Guinness. Owens a little bit up the middle, and Lyle well, Overbay does what he's done throughout his career find the hole. Yeah, two former, one former, and one current D back first baseman over there with one out. And Scooter Jeanette, don't turn him into a Harley. The sage advice of Bob Brenly at the top of our broadcast. He's sitting on a streak of four straight multi hit games. He singled back in the fifth inning. Laces it the other way into left, and that drops in. Kieschnick is over there. Overbay heads for third. And Jeanette stands at second. Tying, and they'll go ahead, run in scoring position for Milwaukee with one out here, Bob. Make it five straight multi hit games for Scooter Jeanette. The last Brewer to have five straight multi hit games was Ramos Ramirez a couple of years ago. The reception for Ryan Braun. Tying run at third. Go ahead, run at second. One out. Braun one for three. Ted Barrett will walk the ball back out to the mound. Chris Owings hit on the head. There was a pitch thrown up and in at Bolsinger's head on a bunt attempt. D.D. Gregorius was hit by a pitch, and now Barrett scolding Evan Marshall a bit. Yeah, no warnings issue. That's kind of unusual for a plate umpire just to go out and have a word with the uh, pitcher that uncorked 
a wild one behind Ryan Braun here. How did Mickey catch that? I mean, when you think about it, he only got to see that ball for a short period of time, and then Ryan Braun's body got between the ball and his mitt, but somehow he caught it. And Evan Marshall has been ejected. Kirk Gibson was very vocal last season talking about Ryan Braun and what happened in the postseason series between these two ball clubs, and that may have been some unfinished business in the eyes of the Diamondbacks manager. And Marshall is gone. He'll lead to a standing ovation. He threw one behind Braun and then plumped him, and the bases are loaded. Right in the wallet. One pitch after Ted Barrett went out there and gave him the talk. Now Brad Ziegler will come in for the Diamondbacks and we'll take a break and see if cooler heads will prevail. Brad Ziegler on for the D-backs. He inherits a bases loaded one out jam clinging to a one run lead after Evan Marshall was ejected by plate umpire and crew chief Ted Barrett for hitting Ryan Braun after throwing a previous pitch behind him. Uh, Bob what do you think about what we've seen here. Well, we should have got him with the first. One. This is the one that was behind him. Yeah I mean obviously trying to hit him right there but uh, got too far behind him and Braun was able to get out of the way he punts him with the second one. I mean if you're going to hit somebody that's absolutely the right way to do it. Keep it between the shoulders and the knees. He had a base open it sets up a potential double play anywhere on the infield. Not uh, not totally surprising but uh, if Evan Marshall would have got him on the first one he'd still be out there pitching. <laughs> Of course, Ryan Braun suspended 65 games last season for connection to the biogenesis clinic and scandal, and that was after his previous 50 game suspension for a positive test was overturned on appeal. And there was a lot of discussion about what Braun and the Brewers did in the postseason against the Diamondbacks a few years ago. And Kurt Gibson was fairly public and candid with his comments about the, what may have needed to have been done here, and it looks like business was just checked on. Brad Ziegler. When you go back to the beginning of the 08 season, more double play ground balls than any other reliever in baseball by a wide margin. He's got a 22 double play lead on the next best relief pitcher. And so Gerardo Parra, he was hit in the seventh inning last night. Yeah, this was uh, when Evan Marshall came off the field. First guy to greet him there with a fist bump is his skipper, Kirk Gibson. And back to business now. You've got Lyle Overbay 
The tying run at third. Scooter Jeanette, the go-ahead run at second. Ryan Braun at first. One out. 4-3 in the seventh. And here is the red-hot Jonathan Lucroy. Already tonight, two for three. A home run his last time up. Second in the league in hitting at 339. Goldschmidt several steps in on the grass at first, and you can see Braun, the runner behind him. Center field, Peralta backing up, looking up, and that ball is gone, a grand slam. Jonathan Lucroy, his second homer tonight, his eighth of the season, and the Brewers have taken a lead. cheese this inning looked like a slider that just really didn't take the break unusual for Brad Ziegler with that submarine delivery to throw a breaking ball that doesn't move Ramirez hits one long and foul on a play in the right field seats boy Jonathan Lucroy you can't get any hotter than this guy Talk about barreling a ball up. That's exactly what we mean right there, right on the sweet spot of the bat. And there is, as Bob Brenly said, avoid the Limburger inning. And the cheese starts to get a little stinky. As we saw last night when the Milwaukee Brewers got three in the eighth and three in the ninth, and now it is a five run Milwaukee seven. There's the strikeout of Ramirez, and that's the second out here in the inning. Left fielder, Chris Davis. Brings up Chris Davis. He's 0 for 3. There's a strike 0 1. Brandon Webb is set to join us in the home half of the seventh inning, and so we'll get Webby's thoughts on what we saw, which was clearly uh, an intent to hit Ryan Braun. We'll ask him about that and the timing and what's happened since. That's Ryan Braun in the Milwaukee dugout. There's the strikeout of Davis, but Jonathan Lucroy, his second homer tonight, a grand slam. Brewers get five in the inning, and they lead it seven to eight.
He's hit in the back of the helmet by Kyle Loge. And then in the seventh, Ryan Braun. Evan Marshall throws behind him. He's worn by Ted Barrett and then Brandon Webb. Very next pitch, plunks him. Your thoughts? <laughs> Well, I mean, there's got to be, there's a little bit of retaliation there. It looks like to me, uh, it missed him. You know, he missed him on the first pitch. Obviously, he was going after him because he went right back in, right back in there and, and got him. Um, it has to be that sometimes in the game. I feel like, you know what I mean. The one's got hit right in the head. Bull Singer is a breaking ball. Went right over his head too. Didn't show that one. Um, so there, you know, something had to be done, had to be done. You think this is uh, left over from the postseason a few years ago, or is this all about tonight? I think it's all about tonight, to be honest with you. I mean, this is this is stuff that happened the inning before, so I think that's all that was. And you always run the risk, however, of waking up a sleeping giant. Not like <laughs> the, you know, the Brewers weren't exactly sleeping. They've been banging the ball around the ballpark pretty good, but it gives them a little extra added motivation. Will Smith, the left-hander on for the second time in the series. There's strike one to Gerardo Parra. Parra, Goldie, Montero, 2-3-4 and four in the Arizona 7th. They now trail it 7-4 after Milwaukee gets five in the top half of the inning. Four on Jonathan Lucroy's grand slam. This is bounce to shortstop, Gene Segura. By the way, that was only the eighth career home run by a right-hand hitter. Off Brad Ziegler and the first ever Grand Slam that he's allowed. And comes to the hottest hitter on the planet right now, Jonathan Lucroy. I mean, he has just barreled the ball up every at bat so far in this series. Paul Goldschmidt has been up three times and walked three times. The other downside of what happened in the top half of this inning was that it erases a pretty good start by Mike Bolsing. Yeah, he was throwing the ball well. There was a couple of, uh, you know, balls up in the zone. He got ambushed by Ramos Maria's there in the second inning for the, you know, first pitch home run. And Luke Roy got another another pitch to hit. He fell behind, had to come back in the zone and, and, and got him for a home run. But other than that, you know, no walks, handful of strikeouts, and, and uh, looked pretty good. Very encouraging, that's for sure. Yeah. Two and one to Goldie. Trying to extend that 10 game hitting streak. Herrera that is there in the gap in right center field. Well, Webby, let's see how you did. It's that time again. It's the old ATT fan photo. I'm excited you're... tonight. How'd you do? I did excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is Nicholas. Nice. Look at that. Wow. That is good work. All star jerseys in there. Thanks to you think? nice closet there for Nicholas. I like that. <laughs> Good choice, Webby. Thank you. Thanks to all of you who tweeted in your fan photo using the hashtag AZ fan photo. Brought to you by AT&T. So uh, does he pass muster here? What's uh, what's happening? Uh, well, we've got a few more games on the homestand. <laughs> wow. Here. Heard that a couple what's times. What's the guy have to do? Like. <laughs> I've been out a couple weeks, so I got to build it back up. Yeah, there you go. See? I was building up. I was getting close. Yeah. I was getting real close. Getting your pitch count up there. You know? Yeah, it's all about momentum. <laughs> Are you going to be here again tomorrow? Yeah, I got. Five. This is the thing, though. This is the kicker. Five games this week. Ooh. Yeah. Well, if we can't nail this thing down by this week, then Something's I. Wrong. Yeah. I don't think that bodes too well for you. <laughs> there's no doubt there's something wrong. 0-2 <laughs> oh to Miguel Montero. Well, Brandon Webb will see you on Diamondbacks right. Live after the ball game. Nice right, job guys. on the fan photo. Thank you. I'll see what I can do for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. You get it. Fans tonight's attendance is...
bench coach says Jonathan Lutroy is the most underrated guy in baseball. And you know what? I think I believe him. He has had one heck of a series, and we're not even halfway through. Two homers tonight, including a grand slam. Just a single for added measure, and uh, boy, we've talked about his defense behind home plate, calling pitches for this Brewers staff. He has been the total package this year for Milwaukee. Our Gila River game summary, Lucroy, his fourth career multi-home run game. He has now hit safely in 12 of his last 13 games and is second in the National League in hitting behind Troy Chulowitzki. And talking about Naren and how he thinks Lucroy is so under the radar as Randall Delgado was out there for the eighth inning. Naren, of course, caught in the big leagues. He was a teammate of the late Thurman Munson. And Lucroy reminds him of Munson offensively. Naren says the way he uses his hand stays inside the ball for a catcher one of the closest to swing in the bat to Munson of anyone he's seen since 1979. That's high praise Thurman Munson was a great offensive catcher. Jerry Naren the Brewers bench coach down there with Ron Renneke. So it's Delgado on for the eighth and here's Reynolds who's 0 for 3. Reynolds with the Brewers on a minor league contract got an invite to big league camp. He said he actually had very similar minor league offers from eight to ten other teams. But picked the Brewers as his spot where he could kind of relaunch his career because Miller Park's a good place to hit. And he knew he would get the opportunities to get some at bats. And so far it's worked out. Pulls this one down the left field line. Will it stay fair? And it is a foul ball. That was almost home run number 14 for Reynolds. For a moment there, that had to feel kind of familiar for Mark Reynolds. I bet. Towering drive to left field on the good side of the foul pole for the Diamondbacks that time. The man known as Grumpy. One and two. He's still looking for his first hit in this series back at Chase Field. And he's got his second strikeout tonight, one down in the game. Brings up Gene Segura, who has two hits tonight, both triples. A two triple game. That's not something you see a lot of. Those Royals, they put another whooping on the Tigers today to move into first place in that AL Central Division. Yeah, they beat up Max Scherzer and so yeah, they scored uh, seven against Verlander last night, got 10 off Scherzer tonight. And ninth win in a row. They're leading the American League Central over the Tigers and Tribe or three back. Talk about timely hitting in the month of June. The Royals are batting 377 with runners in scoring position. They were seven for 14 tonight against the Tigers. In all three of those teams, we've seen the White Sox already. We were at U.S. Cellular Field, but the Indians are in here next week for two on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tigers come in for three in July, and Kansas City for three in August. So we'll see. And all the leaders in the AL Central. We go to Minnesota as well at the uh, end of the year. September 22nd through the 24th. That's the last road stop of the season. Target Field. Where you can see the 2014 Major League All-Star Game. July 15th only on Fox. 
Long run for Gerardo Pyro. Gregorius is out there from his second base spot and tracks it down for the second out. A little DDD. Uh, DD's done a nice job at second Set base. Segura Elliot goes all the way Herrera. down to a knee. Just a bear crawl out of that batter's box. Yeah, every all the angles are different for DD. He's used to playing shortstop. We mentioned he played quite a bit of second base at Triple A, but all the angles are different on ground balls and pop ups, and uh, that time a nice running catch out there right in front of Gerardo Parra. Elian Herrera. Now earlier this afternoon we were out here and uh, you know Didi of course has played shortstop all last year's played a lot of second base this year both with the Diamondbacks and with the Reno Aces. But he's so good defensively and so athletic they're thinking hmm hmm I wonder where else we could play <laughs> Didi Gregorius. And uh, so this afternoon it looked like this he was down there at third base with Jordan Pacheco. Taking some ground balls and some infield over there. What do you think? Why not? I mean, you know, we know Martin Prado is versatile, can play multiple positions. There may be a point in the near future where Kurt Gibson decides it's time to move Prado somewhere else to get Didi in the lineup at third base. Yeah, who knows? It can't hurt anything to take ground balls all over the infield. Can only improve your value to the team. He certainly has the arm to play third oh, base. Yeah. And that's a Typically a power position. Martin Prado will mostly get you doubles there, the occasional homer. You don't think of Didi certainly as a power hitter. So you're not sure how he profiles at third, but athletically he could certainly handle it. Two and two now on Herrera. Pitcher spot is due up next. Ricky Weeks is in the on deck circle. And there may be that odd uh, extra inning ball game where you get jammed up and you use a lot of pinch hitters or pinch runners or whatever the case may be, and you might need a guy to move to a position he's not totally familiar with. It's funny every spring there you see Kurt Gibson every spring. Paul Goldschmidt nags Gibby to let him play some outfield in case he double switches sometime in some long 15 inning game. Delgado works a 1 2 3 inning with a pair of strikeouts. D-backs trail at 7-4. Signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Bottom of the eighth we go here at Chase Field. New pitcher for the Brewers is Brandon Kinsler. He's out there with a 7-4 lead. He'll work to Martin Prado, David Peralta, Chris Owings, 5-6-7 and seven in the Diamondback eighth. Good ERA for Kinsler pitching out of that Brewers bullpen. 24 and a third inning pitch. Only 12 strikeouts against a walk. Leading off for the D-backs, third baseman, Martin Prado. Martin Prado has a pair of RBIs, and RBI single is last time up. He drove in a run on a fielder's choice back in the first. 
Diamondbacks led this one 3 0. They now trail it 7 4. On the five run, Milwaukee seventh, including Jonathan Lucroy's grand slam, his second home run tonight. And here's Prado. I read something, BB, that I wanted to ask you about, especially since I know you like Lucroy a lot. And we've seen why, certainly, but. Lucroy said when he first came up to the Brewers, and he's a young catcher, they had Jason Kendall there, who played 15 years in the major leagues, one of the best defensive catchers of his time. And he said that Kendall told him it took him six years to learn how to call a game in the big league. Six years. Now, Lucroy's in his fifth season, and he says he's just now starting to get comfortable doing that, figuring out what the, the Brewers have been doing and. What pitches to call, what fingers to throw down there. What, what about that? Five, six years to figure that out? Well, for some guys it does. I mean, obviously, if you have a good teacher, if, uh, if the other part of your catcher combo is a veteran guy who's willing to impart his knowledge, or if you have a pitching coach or a catching instructor in the organization uh, who's a good teacher, you, certainly you can accelerate that process. But uh, yeah, as far as learning on the fly, it, it takes a while. It, Initially, you put down figure fingers as suggestions, You're just kind of suggesting to the pitcher maybe a fastball away here, and you know, especially a veteran pitching staff will shake you off a lot in the early part of your career, and you learn from that, and you learn how they like to pitch certain hitters, uh, certain styles of hitters, and then eventually it just becomes second nature. You know that in a one-two count to a left-handed uppercut pole hitter, you want to throw something off-speed, low and away. Other pitchers might want to cut a fastball in on that guy, and you have to learn each pitcher on your staff and their strengths and weaknesses and what makes them tick, and that's a, that's a time-consuming process. Well, Ron Renicki said that these days the learning curve for catchers in terms of how to call the game and uh, learning to know what to do to handle pitchers is steeper than ever because nowadays in amateur baseball, the coaches call all the pitches. And as Peralta hits that one to Reynolds, there's their coaches. And so you've got a catcher here, a, a good catching prospect that you sign, and you get him, and he's never called the pitch. And he, the pitcher never shakes off a sign Shortstop, Chris when you're an amateur. Away. So these guys become pros, and they don't have those skills, and they have to learn it, right? And fortunately, that's uh, the way the game has gone. Uh, you know, not to throw stones at high school and college coaches, but if, uh, if you've got a good catcher back there, trust him. Trust his instincts. You know, that that's what major league teams are looking for that catcher with great instincts back there behind the plate uh, former big league catcher Ron Hasse used to be with the Diamondbacks organization for a long time uh, he said by the time you figure out what you're doing behind the plate you can't physically do it anymore <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you oh I mean you know I was a utility guy coming up through the minor league signed to, to play outfield and rookie ball eventually worked my way into third base where I was an everyday third baseman for a couple of years and uh, eventually got back behind the plate at the same time I was playing other positions so uh, it took me a long time to learn how to call a game and how to use my pitcher's strengths against the hitter's weaknesses on a hop to Segura at short that's a one two three inning for Kinsler and we go to the ninth D-backs trail at seven four
OD, it's our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool plays of the game. Chris Owings at shortstop. Chris Owings is going to find himself uh, leading a lot of highlight shows over the course of his career. Tremendous range, strong throwing arm. And, and for me, a, a shortstop has to have good body control. You've got to be able to spin around with your back to first base and quickly pick up your target, and make that throw, go to your feet, get or go to the ground, get back on your feet quickly, and CO is able to handle all of them. And he's been a hitter as well. He also has been hit in the head, the back of the head with a pitch today. And fortunately, he appears to be just fine. Randall Delgado back out there after a 1 2 3 8, including a pair of strikeouts. And with Brandon the pitcher Kinsley. spot leading off the Number inning, we'll see Ricky Weeks. Ricky Weeks. Brewer and Diamondback rate, Doug Davis in the house. Probably Even a visit to each clubhouse before the ball game. Ricky Weeks, 289 on the year. Most of the action he sees these days is at a, as a pinch hitter. He's only made 18 starts, all at second base. Eight for 28 this year as a pinch hitter with 10 strikeouts. He struck out in this role last night. Ricky Weeks got big time money from Milwaukee just before the 2011 season, four years, 39 million. And things have kind of been in a tailspin for him ever since. There's an $11 million option for next year in that deal that vests if he gets 600 plate appearances this year. But as we've just said, with only 18 starts, that seems unlikely. One ball and two strikes. Last season, Ricky Weeks kind of played his way out of a job, hit only 209. Ten homers after three straight seasons with more than 20 homers. And in 350 at bats last year, he had just 24 RBIs. Called strike three. Third strikeout for Delgado. One down in the ninth. Fans, Fox Sports, Arizona.com. All the online local sports coverage you can't find anywhere else. There is Jack Gerter. You'll have his post-game analysis and reaction Second from the clubhouse. There'll be a lot to talk about down there after this one. And more on the legacy of the late, great Tony Gwynn. All that and more, Fox Sports, Arizona.com. Scooter Jeanette, the leadoff man. We said you got to... Make sure you don't turn the scooter into a Harley, but he's got a pair of hits, including a double. He scored a run. So uh, your keys to the game, we went 0 for 2. Yeah, we did. Had the Limburger inning, and scooters look good again. Had two hits last night, including a homer. Two hits tonight. He's just a uh, Harley Davidson sportster right now. If he gets one more <laughs> knock, we'll have to uh, elevate him to Ultra Glide. Number to third, Prado charges. Bill pulls Goldie off the bag, and Jeanette heads for second. Gregorius backs it up, and the Brewers have a one-out base runner. Jeanette aboard for the third time tonight. A little chopper to the left side. A lot of side English on that ball. Prado got to it quickly. Looked like he just did not have a grip on the ball as he tried to throw on the move. And here comes Ryan Braun. Smattering of applause from Brewers fans. He singled in the third, was hit by a pitch, and scored a run his last time. After Evan Marshall threw behind him and then plunked him with the next pitch and was ejected. 
They score that uh, for Jeanette as a single E5 to second base. So a base hit for Jeanette error on Martin Prado at third. Yeah, it was kind of funny. The first pitch from Evan Marshall that sailed behind Ryan Braun and Ted Barrett, the home plate umpire, just went out and talked to Evan Marshall. I have no idea what he might have said. Warnings were not issued to both benches. Warnings still haven't been issued to both benches, even after Braun was hit with the next pitch. Reminded me of a game when I was catching Rick Russell for the Giants. And uh, we had a similar situation. We had some payback due to us, and the, the hitter was at the plate with first base open. And uh, I won't name the home plate umpire, but he leaned over and said, He's going to hit him, isn't he? And I said, Well, <laughs> probably. And sure enough, Rick Rush will hit the guy in the back with the first pitch. And the umpire came out from behind the plate and walked halfway to the mound and said, Big Daddy, I got to throw you out of the game. And Rick Russell said, You've got to do what you've got to do, and I got to do what I got to do, and just walked <laughs> off the field. It was very unusual that after the first pitch for Marshall went behind Braun's back, Barrett walked the ball out to the mound and uh, gave Marshall a little talking to. But still no warnings, so no ejections either, other than Marshall. Barrett delivering the baseball to Evan Marshall and saying whatever he said. It slipped. It always slips. I have to pitch inside to be effective. <laughs> He's crowding the plate. Got away from me. Yeah. Or you can do like Cole Hamels did when he drilled Bryce Harper and said, Yeah, I hit him. <laughs> that was refreshing. I kind of like that myself. But do you think that was all? It, this is just speculation, of course. Do you think that was all just about tonight, not about any postseason stuff? Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, yeah, I, I was kind of a fan of the hit by pitch if the situation called for it. You had a base open, one out in the inning, it sets up a possible double play. Of course, uh, it didn't work out that way. But uh, you know, why try to pitch around a guy or walk him intentionally? It sends a message. It, just drill him, send him on down to first base. Like I said, if Marshall had gotten him on the first pitch, there wouldn't have been any problem. Braun strikes out four strikeouts for Delgado. Catcher Jonathan Lucro. And here's that man, Lucro. A pair of homers tonight, including a grand slam. I stand corrected. Apparently, warnings were issued after Evan Marshall was ejected from the ball game. I didn't. I uh, didn't see Ted Barrett. Uh, yeah, usually those are very demonstrative. Yeah, go to both benches and uh, and warn them. But uh, apparently, that was done. Lucroy started the ball game at 3:35. He's now up to 3:41, second in the league. This was Jonathan Lucroy against Brad Ziegler. Bases loaded in the seventh. It was after he had homered in the sixth. This is a guy that couldn't get a college scholarship offer anywhere. He's from Eustis, Florida, as a pretty good high school baseball player, he thought. Went to the typical big schools you would think of down in that part of the country. Nobody had any interest. The only one that gave him a scholarship was Louisiana Lafayette. 
So he went there. And did indeed turn out to be a good player. Brewers got him with a third round pick in 07. Brewers front office did a tremendous job with Lucroy's contract. This guy, as we've seen, is an excellent catcher. But they signed him in spring training two years ago to a five-year, $11 million deal. And there's a club option for an additional year, a very team-friendly $5.25 million price tag. So this guy, in terms of performance, is grossly underpaid. But a very team-friendly deal. They control Lucroy through at least 2017. Three and two. And they're getting a lot for their money. Oh, yeah, they are. I'm telling you, this guy, uh, we've talked about him throughout the first two games of this series. Very much under the radar outside of uh, Cheesetown up there in Milwaukee. Not a lot of people have heard of Jonathan Luke Roy or are aware of what he's capable of doing on a baseball field. But uh, people are going to become aware of Jonathan Luke Roy. Last season hit 280, had a career high 18 homers. Drove in 82 runs. And the offensive numbers have been even more impressive this year. Two outs, three and two. Ricky Week says all the Brewers players give Luke Roy a hard time about everything. He's, Ryan Braun says, kind of the little brother that they all pick on because he's a nerd. That's Ryan Braun's word. He says there are just very few things about him that are cool. Except his offense, I guess. Yeah. Batting average, pretty cool. That'll <laughs> work. And as you can see here, he is a tough out. Part of what makes him such a tough hitter is uh, he, he can hit the ball in the gaps, as he's shown tonight. He can hit it out of the ballpark with a very short, quick swing. He's not a big prototypical power hitter that takes that big uppercut swing. He's just trying to hit line drive, spray him around the field, and if you happen to make a mistake, yeah, he'll put that same quick swing on it and get the ultimate result. And I would think that type of swing is also very useful in these situations where he's just trying to stay alive and keep this at bat going because you can quickly just get a piece of it and try and get a better pitch to hit the next time. Yeah, I mean, just compare the kind of swings we've seen here in the two-strike count from Luke Roy to the kind of two-strike swings we saw from Mark Reynolds in this ballgame. Uh -huh. Mark Reynolds still trying to hit the ball, you know, out of the ballpark in two-strike counts. Jonathan Luke Roy just putting that same quick swing on the ball that he does every at-bat. One more time. And Delgado wins the battle. He strikes out five in two innings and sends us to the bottom of the ninth. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Coming up for the D-backs, Kieschnick, the pitcher spot, and then Didi down 7-4.
major leagues in saves, and he's out there with a 7-4 lead. He last worked Saturday versus Cincinnati and got saved number 21. So that is now eight seasons of at least 20 saves, and he right there is just behind Joe Nathan. Among active pitchers, he is 15th on Major League Baseball's all-time list. Still a big-time strikeout pitcher. You ready to get on the roller coaster, partner? What do you got? First 19 games this year, K-Rod did not allow a run. Over his next seven, he gave up seven runs and blew two saves with three home runs allowed. And over his last eight games, once again, only one run allowed. Well, so he's due to implode right here. I think so. I like it. Roger Kieschnick will lead off the ninth for the D-backs. Pitcher spot is due up next. Cody Ross is in the on-deck circle. Kieschnick so far 0 for 3. Roger had a pair of hits last night, and RBI scored a run. Looking for base runners. Drives that one to right field, and that ball is gone. A home run, it is in the pole. Roger Kieschnick splashed down, and it's 7-5. You called it. He was due. Kira. <laughs> Felt high fastball out over the plate. What a different looking hitter Roger Kieschick has been this time around. I love that shot. For Randall Delgado, number seven. Just his body language, his, his rhythm in that batter's box. Everything looks so much more comfortable this time around for Roger Kieschick. I mean, hit the first time he came up, he just looked overmatched. 0 oh, for 7, 5 strikeouts, but so far so good. A second go round. Now here's Cody. Cody Ross flied out in a pinch hit appearance last night. 192 on the year. And 2 for 11 as a pinch hitter this season. to the plate with nobody out in the ninth. Let's see if they run for Cody. Pretty good numbers against K-Ron. Second baseman, D.D. Looks like Ross will be the base runner here. And D.D. steps in. The upcoming hitters for the Diamondbacks. There's really not a spot where you would pinch hit for anybody. Now, granted, Cody Ross has run uh, would only pull the D-backs within one, but I don't envision a spot where we would see Tony Campana as a pinch hitter at any time here uh, for the remainder of this ninth inning. I'm surprised he's not in there running at first. At least put some pressure on the Brewers' defense. Give K Rod something else to think about. 0-1-2 Gregorius. D-backs led this ball game 3-0 after one inning. Brewers came back with one in the sixth, five in the seventh. After scoring one in the second inning. And now the Diamondbacks trying to come back. Gregorius strikes out. Brings up Gerardo Parra. A little trickery there from K-Rod. Normally uses that big leg kick, but that time went to a very abbreviated delivery and then threw a changeup. Kind of jumps at the hitter, gets you to speed up your bat a little bit, and then throws an off-speed pitch and had Didi way out in front. Gerardo Parra singled and scored a run in the first. He is one for four.
Base hit for Pollard. And now the winning run steps to the play that's Paul Goldsmith. Ringing single into center field that time. He won the changeup. Oh, waits back nicely and really stroked that ball into center field. Goldie walked his first three times up tonight. He flying out to center his last turn. 0 for 1. A 10 game hit streak on the line. Strike one. Off homers all last season. He's down 0 2. A 10 game hitting streak. He has hit in 12 of his last 13. He's got Cody Ross at second. Ronald Parra is the tying run at first. One and two. Well, that is a tough pitch to take right there. Either Goldie's got a real good eye for the bottom of the strike zone, or he got away with one right there. Well, let's see if he can take advantage now. That ear bent under the batting helmet. One ball and two strikes. Got him. Now in his career, Francisco Rodriguez would try to throw harder, harder, harder when he got in trouble. But uh, with a few years and a lot of experience, he's realized that that changeup is a devastating weapon. When you've got traffic on the bases and aggressive hitters at the plate. Really good straight change up that time to get Goldie swinging. Miguel Montero, RBI single in the first. He has never had a hit against Francisco Rodriguez. One for four tonight. Rolled up the first baseline. Reynolds will take it himself, and the Brewers win the ball game 7 5. D back strand, the tying runs on base against K Rod. And Milwaukee has taken the first two games of this four game set. That's too bad. Waste a pretty good outing by Mike Bolsinger tonight. The offense uh, jumped out to an early lead. We've seen them do that an awful lot this year and then just kind of fell asleep until that ninth inning once again. 7 5, your final score. The 21st come from behind win for Milwaukee this season. That is the most of the major leagues. They came from behind to win both the first two games of the series. And Wade Miley will try and put a stop to that tomorrow when he takes the mound against Matt Garza. Let's go out to center field and wrap it up. D backs live starts now. It does. Thank you very much, Steve, with you. Along with Bob Bradley, I'm Todd Walsh, alongside Brandon Webb. Jimmy Jackson will join us in just a bit. And Brandon, I know this. We're going to hear. I can't wait to hear from Diamondbacks manager Kirk Gibson. I'm sure Jody will be efforting an interview with some comments from Evan Marshall. We need to hear tonight, I think, from the Milwaukee Brewers in some way, shape, or form. A highly uh, emotionally charged game for a lot of reasons. So I guess I'll just turn to you. We will talk about the sexy topic here. Did something have to be done here tonight in terms of retribution by the Diamondbacks towards the Brewers? Does it have to be denied? No. Uh, I do think that there has to be something that at some point in this series there's a couple of situations there that, that called for it, but the situation I don't think called for it at that time. At that particular time. So we'll break that down, we'll show it to you, and we'll flash back into the life and times of Brandon Webb on the mound 
in a situation like that as well. It's a great story. We'll have all of that when we come back. Diamondbacks Live is straight ahead here on Fox Sports Arizona.